Hi, and welcome to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and your go-to place for any related content for the HP Reverb G2. Today, it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be a two-part video where we're going to be talking about the Aceta Corsa Competizione. By the way, if you're new to the channel, very nice to meet you. A huge welcome back to all our regular subscribers. Thank you again for your continued support. So today's video is going to be part one of two, where I'm going to teach you how to get all set up with Aceta Corta Competizione from the ground up. You know, it won't really matter, I think, what kind of graphics card you have. Although the first part of this video, we will talk about the RTX graphics settings and then move on to SteamVR and then move inside of the actual Aceta Corta Competizione graphics settings. And in tomorrow's video, I'm going to teach you how to boost the frame rate by literally 10 to 20%. So that's gonna be a really cool video. Make sure that you're part of the notification squad by enabling the notification bell after you hit subscribe so YouTube tells you when I upload that video. So the first thing we're going to do is go inside of the NVIDIA graphics panel. However, I just want to let you know I'm gonna put some timestamps in the description below just in case you don't have the same graphics card. However, it might actually give you some insights as to why I chose certain things, you know, even if you have, for example, the AMD. So, all right, let's begin. All right, so we're inside of the NVIDIA control panel. Let's start from the top on the left-hand side. So where you see adjust image settings with preview, I normally choose the use the advanced 3D image settings. It works perfectly fine for me. And then inside of manage 3D settings, this is where all the good stuff. So I'm gonna go through every single one, one by one. And then we'll move on to the Steam VR settings before we go inside of Aceta Corsa Competizione graphic settings. So for the image sharpening and the ambient inclusion, normally speaking, I let the VR application handle these kind of things. I don't, you know, make my computer work harder than it's supposed to. So I leave this off. The anisotropic filtering, same thing. Normally I just let the application control do this. I don't need to, you know, bump it up or to sample it even more because generally speaking, the app in my experience is more than enough. For the anti-aliasing FXAA, now normally I never put this on simply because this kind of anti-aliasing is going to render the image extremely jaggered with a lot of lines everywhere. So I completely avoid to switch this on. And also I will let, you know, the application again run on these kind of settings so that I don't have to make my computer work any harder. So off for this one. For the anti-aliasing gamma correction, normally I will put this on because there isn't this option inside of VR applications and it will, you know, basically tweak the brightness of how jaggered or, you know, the edges are going to be and, and the graphics are going to be. So this is something good to have on. And also it doesn't actually affect the frames per second. So I put it on. For the anti-aliasing mode, generally speaking, I will leave this to application control because again, generally speaking, VR applications have all the tools required inside of it to be able to make the changes and tweaks that you need. So there's no need to enhance the application of any kind. It actually didn't really make that much of a difference anyway with Aceta Corsa Competizione. So I don't want my PC to work harder. So I leave it to application control. For the anti-aliasing transparency, however, I did bump it up to 8x only because I noticed actually it didn't make any difference in terms of the losing or gaining frames per second. And also it means that all your jagged edges will basically look kind of transparent and it doesn't really make that much of a huge difference, but it makes somewhat a difference. So good to have. So I put it to 8x, but put it to whichever, you know, setting you feel is best for your machine. For background application max frame rate, normally speaking, I will leave this off and just let the computer and the actual VR application work out as to how many frames it needs to power it. I don't want to limit it and then, you know, have any latency or any issues. And then also for CUDA GPUs, all of them, of course, I will put the GeForce, whichever graphics card that you may have. Now, there are not many settings inside of the actual control panel that are going to make that much of a huge impact in terms of losing or gaining frames per second when you're playing at Seta Corsa Competizione. However, for the dynamic super resolution or the DSR, you're definitely going to see some difference there. Now, the great thing with the DSR is that it's going to take all your pixels and crush them to the native size of the actual VR headset itself. So what's going to happen is you're going to notice some loss of detail for sure. And also the more you crush it, basically what's going to happen is it's going to become more and more blurry and, you know, it's just not going to look super, super great. And you're going to have to compensate in other areas in order to bring back the quality that you had originally. Also, the more you crush it, the more frames per second you're actually going to lose. So do be aware of this. After a lot of testing, I decided that the best setting was between 
1.20 and then 2 but to be honest with you 1.78 is probably the maximum you could go before you start to lose some frames per second there. Now of course once you've made the choice of the DSR you can also basically change the actual smoothness or the sharpness of what's going to be rendered inside the VR headset. So the native one is 33. I put it anything between you know 25 to 35. It's absolutely fine. Anything more than that it will really depend uh, to be honest with you with your eyesight and you know your personal preference. So do have you know a little fiddle around there. Now for the low latency I did some testing and to be honest with you I didn't really see any huge improvements in terms of gaining more frames per second which is why I leave it off because I don't want my computer to work harder and potentially lose all the other frames it could pre-render by using you know this setting so I put it off and then also for max frame rate I don't want to limit any frames whatsoever I want the application to be able to dictates and use as many frames as it can so I also use this off then also for multi-frame sampled I really don't use this at all because it didn't make any difference whatsoever in terms of you know the frames per second and in terms of the graphics and getting more out of the machine so I just leave it off now for the next couple of settings for the open GL rendering GPU normally I leave this to auto select as pretty standard and then for power management mode I always put it to optimum power because of course you know I, I want my computer to be able to save some power and not use as much as possible and then for the shader cache normally I put this on because it's always good if the computer can cache you know if it has the ability to cache any of the materials and textures then it doesn't have to re-render all this stuff so again it's going to save on power and also gain more frames per second in the gameplay along the lines. Now for the texture filtering negative LOD bias normally I leave it on clamp because basically when there's going to be anisotropic filtering enabled it's going to produce better image quality especially as this setting will introduce more jagged edges as there's going to be a lot of movement so I definitely want to clamp down on as many of those pixels as possible. Now for the texture filtering quality however I always put the high quality uh, I did notice a difference when I'm using it and also it actually helped to gain more frames per second by allowing the graphics card to do the work when it comes to this specific setting. For threaded optimization I normally leave it on automatic and then for triple buffering I actually leave it to off because I found that it did affect my frames per second not by much but a little bit so you know I just lift it off. Now the next setting however is one of the most important um, that's really going to help you not just in Assetto Corsa Competizione but also other VR applications that you'll be using. Now for the vertical sync normally speaking this is used more for a traditional monitor not a monitor inside of a VR headset so it's actually advisable to switch it off because if you have it on what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of stutter especially when you're going to be looking from left to right inside of your VR headset. I don't know if you've noticed that and then you brought down your Steam VR settings and you're like how come I still have stutter I don't understand. Well this is most probably why. So if you have the option to switch the vertical sync off by all means do this and then finally I would say that the next setting is probably the third most important settings in getting the least frame per second as possible is the virtual reality pre-rendered frames. Now if your graphics card can handle it and you have the right GPU and everything put it to the maximum that you possibly can because what's going to happen is the more frames that your computer is going to pre-render the more time it has to think ahead of itself so that by the time those frames come into play and you see them your gameplay is going to be much much smoother so it's highly advisable to put it to you know the maximum that you possibly can and then finally the VR variable rate sampling now to be honest with you I didn't really see a huge improvement when using this but then again it didn't really also affect the FPS so I left it to adaptive just in case it does help. Alright so what we're going to do next is we're going to go inside of Steam VR and I'm going to show you the settings that I used in order to get the best frame rate that I could and then of course we're going to move inside of Assetta Corta Competiciones graphic settings and I'm going to show you one by one again the settings that I used. Okay so we're inside of Steam VR now so generally speaking I will do all my settings to the graphics for Steam VR inside of here so that I can avoid any potential issues later on. So let's bring the uh, control panel up. So I set that Corsa Competizione is here. So I'm going to go to settings and then I'm going to go to video. I'm going to go to per application video setting. 
and then I'm going to try, I'm going to go and find Aceta Cosa Competizione. There we go, it's here. And then because we turned off VSync, we can put it up all the way to 100. I don't advise putting it more to 100 at this time and point. Just stick to 100 is more than enough. And then use your global settings. And then also for the legacy reprojection mode, switch it off. And then just close it. And then basically, you know, go back to home. And then choose Aceta Cota. And now I'm going to show you the graphics settings that he used inside of Aceta Cota Competizione. By the way, I forgot to mention in the NVIDIA control panel that if you don't have the option to turn off VSync from there, then make sure that you don't go higher than 94 in your Steam VR settings, because I found that if I went higher than that, I would actually start to get blue screen. Blue screen normally happens with the HP Reverb G2 if it just simply cannot handle the processing power going from the CPU and the GPU all the way to the VR headset. So just a quick tip there. <laughs> Now, just to let you know that for this application, I'll be using the Xbox S controller. Now, do note that if you're going to use the same, you need to pair it to your computer before you open Steam, before you open SteamVR, and before you also enable your mixed reality software. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. It might not actually work. And also, if you find that you're fiddling around with the buttons and nothing is actually happening and nothing is working, make sure that you actually enable the screen of Aceta Corsa Competizione on your display and not you're not running the actual Windows Mixed Reality tab. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, by the way, when you load Aceta Corsa Competizione for the very first time, if you find that you're not in the right place in the garage, for example, you're located at the very top, all you have to do is bring your Steam VR settings and click on the reset position and then wait until the clock goes down and then normally you'll be situated at the right position again. Okay, so today's settings are going to focus more on what I normally used to use. And then tomorrow's video is going to focus on the little trick I'm going to show you as to how to optimize and bump up your frames per second, literally by 10 to 25%. It's really, really amazing. So stay tuned for that video tomorrow. So first of all, let's go to our options and then go to video system settings. Now, you know, you may be on low and you want everything to be on epic, right? Well, no, don't think like that. First of all, the top part is more to do with your display settings. So full screen, disable this. This one, you can put it to whatever your screen is. And then VSync, make sure it's disabled. Very important. Frame rate limit is off. Menu and triple screen is disabled also. Now, for the next settings, is really going to impact your VR gameplay tremendously. So first of all, the resolution scale, this is basically what's going to dictate how smooth or how laggy your gameplay is going to be as well as judge as to what detail or amount of detail you're going to have. Now, generally speaking, I would start this on low at around 55 and I would not go beyond 70 using the RTX 2070 just to let you know. So let's just start off at 55 and then I'll show you some gameplay a little bit later as to why I choose this distance, this uh, setting. The view distance, I leave this on high. It doesn't generally impact. In fact, I put it on epic because I want as much view distance as possible. For the shadows and the shadow distance now, this actually does affect the FPS by quite a margin. So normally speaking, I put these on low because they don't really make that much of a difference in the gameplay anyway. Now for the contact shadows, also I leave this disabled. For anti-aliasing, I normally put this on epic because of course I don't want any jagged edges as much as possible. And talking about jagged edges, the anti-aliasing type, I highly suggest you use Temporal, simply because Temporal is actually going to create more smoothness in your gameplay compared to when you're actually using KTAA or when you're using FXAA. This is going to actually create a lot of lines everywhere and really not make it comfortable whatsoever. So I definitely suggest to use Temporal as much as you can, even though Temporal might do some ghosting sometimes in some areas of the game, but it's acceptable and it works perfectly okay. Now for the effects, for the post-processing, the foliage, and the textures. I've done some testing on this, and to be honest with you, it does actually take one or two frames per second more for the VR headset to be able to think. So I normally put them on low only because it doesn't actually make that much of a huge difference in the actual gameplay and the quality of the actual graphics themselves. So do go ahead and test yourself and leave a comment below if you think that it works better for you. For the mirror view distance, I leave it on 70. For the mirror quality, however, you could put it on low or mid if you want. I generally put it on mid, but 
low is perfectly acceptable as well. For the mirror frame rate, I don't limit it. I leave it to automatic. For the mirror resolution, normally speaking, again, I put it on low. I don't need it to be super high. And then for the opponent's visibility, normally I put this on 10 or I put it on 12. I wouldn't put it more than that because of course it's going to take more buffer and more frame rates in order to think. Now, because I'm not using the virtual reality setting here at the moment, I'm using the PC version to show you the settings because they don't record in camera. I just want you to know that for the pixel VR density, normally if I use 55 in the render scale, I will use 130 or 140 for the VR pixel density. Normally speaking, I won't go higher than that. And even if I'm using, let's say 70 in the actual uh, render, uh, the resolution scale, sorry, if I use 70 up here, then also normally speaking, I will use 130 or 135 for the VR pixel density. Very, very rarely do I go higher than 145, but normally 130 or 135 is perfectly acceptable. For the virtual real scale, I will leave this to 100. Now for the materials, this will definitely make a difference in the gameplay. I don't put it on epic because the difference between epic and high are very minimal. However, the difference between high and medium are quite large and you know substantial. So I put it on high. For temporal app sampling, I normally put this on able so that basically it will add more sharpness and really use more super sampling to make the graphics that much better when using the temporal sampling for the sharpness in terms of its filter. For the bloom quality, the bloom is basically all these kind of lighting effects that bounce off different things, you know, like glaring and stuff. Normally speaking, I'll put this on low. For the volumetric, you can have it if you want to have some, you know, some effects, but normally I disable this. Maybe you can use it if you're in a cloudy situation kind of thing, or in a very early morning kind of thing, or if it's raining, for example. For the foliage LOD quality, normally I'll put this on low. It's more than enough. And the car LOD quality, I will leave it on 70. It doesn't really bring that much detail in terms of the gameplay and it will eat those FPS slightly, but you know, you don't really need to put it to 100. So I leave it normally to 70. For the H LOD, normally I'll enable it for the ad advanced sharpen filter. I will also put this on. All right, for the saturation, motion blur, sorry, I put it off. Motion blur can actually create, um, you know, motion sickness. So it's not recommended to put this on. Saturation, I leave it to 100. White balance as neutral. For the sharpness, generally speaking, because the temporal can be, um, you know, it can make things look a bit too, too smooth, a little bit blurry. So I will increase the sharpness to about 150. Some people put it on 200, but I generally put it to 150. For the camera dirt effect, normally I put it to one because this is actually going to eat up on the frames per second and it doesn't really make that much of a difference anyway. So one is more than enough. For image contrast, 0.5 is up to you. Image gain is up to you as well. And tone mapping normally, I don't really see that much of a difference to be honest, but access is supposed to give you more of a, you know, cinematic kind of feel. So these are the settings that I normally have been using. So here on the recording on the left hand side, you'll be able to see the analytical data. Now do take note that whilst I was doing the recording, I also had OBS open and OBS unfortunately has to share my graphics card with the HP Reverb D2, which means I did lose a few frames there. So normally speaking, I'm able to, for the average frames per second, go to about 46, 47 using the settings that I just showed you at the moment. But as I mentioned, tomorrow I'm going to show you a hack which will enable you to boost this. And I was able to get as much as 65 or 66 frames per second on average, which really boosted the gameplay a lot more because I was able to bump up, you know, the pixel density and also the render scale to get more battery smooth gameplay with higher fidelity at the same time. So I was really happy about that and I can't wait to share this hack with you guys. Now, of course, for a VR application like Aceta Corsa Competizione, which is very, very hungry for power, do make sure that you don't have any other programs running in the background. It's very common, you know, that, you know, we have Firefox or Google with 20, tabs open. And then also we have all our folders open. So just make sure all of those are completely closed. And then also go to your task manager and make sure you end task of any other things that are running in the background that perhaps, you know, you just don't need them to be running the same time as Aceta Corsa Competizione. And then do bear in mind that the hotter your computer gets, 
it will also affect the frame rates too. So it's very possible that at the beginning it might run, you know, at 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 if you can, if you have the RTX 390, I think. But after a while, maybe after an hour, two hours, you'll see that there will be a drop in frames per second. That is completely normal. So make sure you don't put your computer against the wall, for example. Make sure it's, you know, got ventilation and all these kind of things. So some details about my computer after I did a benchmark, you can see that the maximum processing frequency is actually overclocked to 4.65 gigahertz. It can actually go all the way up to 4.9, to be honest with you. And then also I'm running with the i7-9700K and the Hero Maximus 11 motherboard. So if you have this as part of your motherboard program software, you know, definitely do some benchmarking and stress testing to make sure that you know you have the highest fidelity graphics as possible but do be very careful when you overclock i highly suggest if you don't really know what you're doing to get a professional to help you because you do need to make sure you have the right cooling system to make sure that you don't damage your computer more over time as it could overheat more and more and then you know you'll have issues with frames per second then also try not to download any illegal software on your computer as possible as much as possible because this will actually create malware that will also affect how your computer's nervous system is going to work and it will also affect your frames per seconds in your gameplay too so just you know some tips there just in case you weren't aware of this all right guys thank you so much for watching today's video i know it was a bit of a long one but i hope you got something out of it leave some thumbs up and also please comment below the like button so that the other 6600 community members can benefit from your tips and tricks and experience with this game and also please let me know where can i get some mods for cars for tracks all these kind of things would be really good to know so please leave a comment below and tomorrow i'm going to share with you how to bump up your fps with the rtx 2070 from 45 to 65 and you know god knows what you're going to get if you don't have the same graphics card but with an rtx 3090 you'll be able to bump it up all the way to 90 fps so that's pretty amazing so make sure you subscribe and also be part of the notification squad so you enable the notification bell so youtube can tell you in your feed when i upload that video all right guys see you tomorrow